So welcome back, ladies and gents, to the WOT Pro League Season 3, Match Day 11. We saw the first game going drastically in favor to Kazan Crew up against Team WD, who still could not get that rather uh, elusive victory they desperately <laughs> need right now. So the second game is the big guys going head to head. It is Mouse Sports facing off against Odin Mortis. Now, as we mentioned before, Odin Mortis were on such a hot streak at the start of the season. They are up in first, but it slowed down a little bit towards the kind of midsection that we're in so far. So they certainly have to kind of build up again. And Mouseports on an easy walkover. Let's bear in mind, even if they are down in ninth, they're a dangerous, dangerous team. Very dangerous to say the least. I mean, they are the third place finishers at season one, fifth at season two, although they have some very bad results in that one. So I think with Mouseports, it's generally down to how they're feeling as a team. If they're, you know, if they're confident about the game, if they're happy with the kind of dynamic within their team, then they're just being completely unstoppable. They, they just push aside, you know, Dim Class, Virtus Pro, Kazza Crew, they just push aside all these top teams. So if they're in that kind of mood, Odin Moyes doesn't stand a chance. But Odin Moyes, having beaten Team Dignitas in the first match day, and obviously uh, in the second match day, Team Dignitas beat Mouseport. So in kind of results, uh, it, Odin Moyes looks pretty good here. They do, and they've been getting those big results in the bag, but they've kind of slowed down a bit. They are down to fifth at the moment, still highly respectable but not quite at the top of the league like they were before. So it's going to be a very hard one to call here. Where's your predictions very quickly? Ooh, I would have to say Mouse Sports will take it. Okay, I'm going to go for o Odin Mortis here. I think that they want to get back towards that top three and start really picking up the wins. But let's pass you over to a lovely lady who can tell you guys how you can get your predictions through to us and the goodies you can win if you do. So Melly, how can people at home get involved here with us at the studio? It's pretty easy. Head over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash WhatProLeague, and like it first, of course, and our Twitter account. It's the same, what Pro League. So we kept it easy for you guys. Head over there, join us, like us, be part of our net network. I will put up a vote where you have to vote for your favorite team or your favorite team in the matchup, and um, predict the exact outcome of the following matchup in the comments below, if you do so, and... All right, you might get lucky and win one of three bonus codes. It's pretty easy, so mm. head over there, check it out. I already posted um, the winners of last challenge. Congratulations here. And um, yeah, we have some nice M3 lights in our mm. suitcase for you at home. So get involved. Well, the next the next level, sorry, no, uh, go a ahead, winning, no. a winning bonus codes is a uh, Easy as well. Head over to Twitter and tweet us something nice by the use of hashtag WhatProLeague. And um, if you have any predictions there or op opinions, feedback, if you like Pansy's hair or Lofter's new haircut, which he has since a week. Yeah. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> yeah, just bring that one in. No, it's, it's okay. Just he had a fight with a lawnmower and he lost. Part, part of our show, get involved. Yeah. Like 36, to hear from euros, 36 euros. 36 euros? 36 euros? Yeah. So. What? This is this is Melly's hairdressing choice that's as well. Not She's true. the one who sent me to this one. What did you do to this not boy? True. That's absolutely not true. Mm. If he's not not able to find a way, it's pretty easy. You have to get out this, of the train station, get up the staircase, and turn to right. What did you do? Tell them. Come I on. went I went up the wrong stairs. There's lots of stairs to choose from. There's like one behind the and train station, one in front. And this is what happens when you take the and wrong stairs. And he went to one. the left, <gasps> not to the right. So dun, don't dun, blame dun. me. It wasn't my fault. Should have given me a map. Yeah, we'll <laughs> do next time. <laughs> I will take there by my hand say here. God, God, it's probably a good idea. I can't I can't find anything. Jeez. Anyway, let's not trust him on his own anymore. Let's get back on track and get away from that diabolical so we did haircut. Track. Thanks. Nice. It's more to the tram thing where you got off the wrong okay, side. Okay, right. Of nice. Yeah. <laughs> double double pun. Combo. Woo! Combo it's breaker. One of those day. <laughs> Oh my God. Anyway, let's look at these lineups head to head so you can have an idea of who's going to be covering our delightful haircuts and faces. Who do we need to be looking out here for? Well, I guess both teams. I mean, Mouse Sports and Oda Moore is equally capable of being each other. We've got Elian, the team leader of Mouse Sports, and he does play the MX5100 absolutely superbly. We've got uh, Christopher, the uh, T69 player, Butcher, probably the best, if not very close to being the best uh, heavy tank player on the, the European server and, and maybe even the world. Um, only maybe beaten by Pat Oslide and those kind of guys uh, and Kiri Lloyd. So I think 
absolutely fantastic players all round for Mouse Sports. Um, sometimes fail to hit the shots they need to hit. I think that's generally their weakest problem, their worst problem. They can they can really get the strategies down, but they just can't connect the shells. They couldn't hit a barn door sometimes. Uh, Odomois <laughs> is the uh, other team they'll be fighting. It's going to be Magus. He's a team manager. We've got Thoris, Shartak as well. Uh, no, Magus is not a team manager. He's a team captain. Shartak's the team manager. Why would you uh, lie to me? It's, it's kind of a strange team dynamic. I'm not really sure who's the team captain. It's either Thoris or Magus, or they just swap roles depending on who's there. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got the uh, new additions for this team. We've got DJ Red Deep, um, Devil, and Uncro who plays a T69. Um, uh, Ram plays a T1. We've got Kurtz, who's going to be joining in, I believe, the first game for this season. Um, and Yukai also plays a T69. So a very lovely setup for both teams. Um, equally capable in terms of skill. I think Mouse Sports are more of a clinical team, though. They, they are, but it's all about how they perform on the day in my eyes. And right now, we're going to find out very quickly because these guys are getting ready to get this one underway. The first map will be Ensk, and the tank picks have begun. So let's not waste any time. And let's check out what they're going for here because these two are known to switch things up occasionally. We've seen some curious choices coming out, but what are we seeing so far? So double T1 from Mouseports, double T1 from Odomois, double 5100 from Mouseports, IS3 5100 from Odomois. So just the standard picks to start us off with. Um, obviously, uh, we could be seeing potentially a 110, although that's been phased out. And it was only really picked by Denova. Um, the most odd pick, I guess, could be the Pershing or um, the uh, 416. Double IS3 from Mouse Sports will be the next tank. So double 5100, double IS3 so far for that team. Um, and I would consider Odom always to pick another IS3 and another 5100 um, as their next one. So obviously, the last two picks are going to be the ones that could throw us off. Um, and the ones that could be the strange tank. So IS3-5100 is going to be a big part of Odomor. It's making a completely even Stevens. Two of 5100s, two IS3s for both teams, just getting the uh, bulk of their tanks out of the way at the beginning, um, and now moving into uh, the later stages of the tank picking. Um, probably going to see, I would think, a T69. I think Odomor is definitely like their T69, especially with Uncro sitting in that one. He's very capable of getting behind. He's, he's a very, situ very good situation awareness and just a good... Um, good solid player in, in general. A mm -hmm. um, shame we couldn't actually see him at any of the offline events. He couldn't make it to DreamHack um, and he couldn't make it to any of the previous events at Katowice where they actually took second. Um, and obviously he didn't actually make it to Gamescom, so we didn't see him there. Um, let's wing on uh, Mouse Sports to pick their next tank. It's going to be their last tank pick coming up. Obviously, considering all their options, having known now what Oda Mortis is going to pick as their bulk. Um, this is Ensk, so it's not the uh, city map of city maps. It's got a bit of green in there. Um, and although it's definitely played more towards the city, we're starting to see the green zone come into effect. More uh, that 9, 10, 11 line, mm. um, which is just the railroads in general. Last pick from the uh, mouse sports is going to be the IS3. And I believe that's also going to come up from uh, Odomoy. So just the standard triple IS3, double MX, if you wanted double T1 from both. Yeah, so completely mirrored lineup between these two. Now, bear in mind, Mouse Sports are in ninth, Odomortis in fifth. Odomortis have had a better season so far by all accounts. But Mouse Sports are talented, they're capable, and they can cause upsets. Last time I saw them on here, I didn't like their performance against Virtus Pro. They had some really strange tactics that didn't quite do it for me personally, but maybe they've worked something out. But you can never deny the tactics that Odomortis come out with. They pioneered using those T1s in such great effect. And I believe it was even on this map, if I'm not mistaken, one of the defining moments for Magus. So I can't wait to see this come into effect if they do decide to use it. But they're one of the early teams who are always able to kind of create these plays with T1s. They've always had these great strategies coming out. They aren't afraid of bringing in new players to kind of really become the team that they are today. Now, my money on this map is going to be with Odin Mortis. Are you going for Mouse on this one? Or are you going to say that they're going to come back in the later games? I think, you know, Odin Mortis have played this game, this map, just so perfectly in the past. They've literally predicted every single move the other team has done. So I think Oda Morris will take this one, although it just depends what mood Mouse is in, really. Yeah, they are such a kind of personality-based team. If the confidence isn't there, if the spirits aren't high, you know, they're not going to be landing the shells. As you mentioned, can be such an important factor for them. They need to get that damage done. So hopefully they can kind of get themselves collected, focus themselves out here, because this is a de defining moment. You want to get off that good start. Bearing in mind the last game, we had a draw to kick it off with. Didn't help out either side. So these teams want to get that initial confidence, that boost towards getting themselves ready here. And hopefully both teams will get this one underway 
away nice and quickly. So guys, let's get you that introduction video towards the one, the only, Ensk. Ensk is a simple map on the face of it, but requires the most skillful team play to play properly. Being such a small map at 600 by 600 meters, the areas of attack are confined to through the city, through the railroads, or through the green zone. The fearsome city side often famed for its fierce firefights, the railroads and green zone areas are hard to play as they have many death alleys. The railroads provide little cover, but good sniping locations. Tanks can shoot over and navigate through the trains to ambush and weaken the opposition. When playing Ensk, always keep in mind that teams may try and rush for the cap and not go for the city brawl. Also, take tanks that can both deal a lot of damage and react quickly to situations. So welcome into the first map. As Joe said, it will be Ensk. And in the north, in that golden yellow, it's going to be Odin Mortis facing off against Mouseports in the south in blue. So what are we seeing so far? So Mouseports going for the right side, green zone, track side. Uh, initially, they're going to keep Ketavan and Karma in those IS3 as well as Nia Pazorni. He's going to play that IS3 towards the back end of the map. So sending all their fast tanks with loads of firepower over to the right with a T1. XP is going to be protecting the one line. The IS3 is the brutes. They're going to be staying in that square village. So that's Mouseports is pretty much tactic. Um, Odomor is playing something similar, although obviously this 5100 is not going to go heavily into the cap and they'll get punished straight away. 432 coming out. Um, and uh, the couple of IS3s are staying in the village. So both teams, uh, quite a tentative start. Got to point out, this is the start that Mouseports used against Virtus Pro, and it did not pay out at all. They missed the shells they needed. They tried to split their attention on a re-rotate. You know, they, they used three tanks almost as the anchor, so they were trying to draw all the opposition down that line, hence why we saw Ankara receiving that first shell. Last time, Virtus Pro just went, no, we're having none of that. We're going to actually spank you here. But Odin Mortis could fall to this, but we've already seen an exchange. So Ankara got one shell. And I believe, as you know, no shells have been returned yet. So I'm waiting to see who's going to really take the advantage here. Yeah, it's in it's in the favour of uh, Mouse Sports at this point in terms of the damage they've done. But it's still, it's nothing really uh, significant. Uh, and I guess this is the time to mention that Mouse Sports did qualify for WCG finals in Kunshan, Kun Kun China. Uh, they actually ended up being an evil Panda Squad 3 to do for the Polish qualifiers. So well, congratulations that to them. That was in Warsaw at the weekend um, after three hours of battling and a best of five. So wow. uh, absolutely insane amount of time. Um, but they did manage to do it. So massive congratulations. Um, hopefully you do well. In the, They'll be uh, joining. I believe the Red Rush Unity actually qualified for that one, uh, beating Na'Vi um, and Virtus Pro. So fantastic to see that happening as well. Um, so... Great stuff for them. They'll be warmed up. They're all having played the whole weekend. Um, and that can come into effect. And it's certainly showing as uh, Uncro got punished straight away. Um, but it's still early days. Seven, seven minutes and 40 seconds to go. T1's still going to be the one trying to find the information. XP is probably going to go up the one line, try and get some uh, some initial spots out. But it doesn't look like Oda Mortis is on the rotate a little bit. Yeah, it does. They, they, they have kind of amalgamated their forces, should I say, uh, you know, behind the flag. They've got themselves drawn towards the city side that we normally see the exchanges going through. Uncro, Kurtz, and Magus all coming through. Now, obviously, Kurtz is new to this lineup, especially in the WT Pro League. This is the first time we're really seeing him in here. He will play in that IS3, so looking towards him to do some real good stuff here, try and get himself on the map and prove his worth, because that's what it comes down to. And in a position like this, they're certainly looking like they want to start a bit of a push here. Yeah, and I think Mouseports already knows, because they seem to be starting to edge their way back to the city. We can see uh, Elians is going back there with the 5100, and we've got Snip defending the base still, but he's changed positions to make sure that he stops any uh, double push from the T1s. XP is going to spot out Sharthak, but the f Sharthak's all going to spot, spot out XP, uh, which gives... Uh, Mouseports, a bit of a clue as to what Oda Mortis does, because on Ents, usually from the north, you push your T1s into the city to find the information, and the other team can kind of guess that if you're doing that, then you've probably got the heavy tanks in the background. Although, it's, it's always a risky thing to guess like that, because obviously, like in poker, um, you can bluff, and then you can get double bluff, and it's, it just goes bad really quickly. But now we can see DJ Red Deep being spotted. He does take a 3 and 12 damage shot. Um, going down to 1088. So a couple of damaging shells coming out for Mouseport's probably done about 700 damage here at the beginning. Yeah, indeed. But Oda Mortis have got all their eggs in one basket at the moment. They are really wanting the city push to happen. Uh, Threaten, Thoros, Kurtz all pushed up in those IS3s, looking to find the opposition. They've actually got no glimpses of where Mouseport's are so far. So 
for once. Maybe this strategy will pay off for Mouse Sports. I'm waiting to see how they kind of evolve it from here or if they're going to stay in this defensive posture. But Odin Mortis surely will not just go into that because they'll just be completely surrounded. What sort of options do Odin Mortis have in this position? Well, they need to find the weak link. And I think the only weak link is Elian because uh, if you look here, Carmen and Ketavan won't be able to get the shots onto Elian if he does get focus. You need to take down X Peter first. He ended 5100, two versus one. Take down Elian as quickly as possible, and then think of uh, what you're going to do with your IS3s. Probably send them through here or along here to stop Carmen and Ketavan getting back to the base and uh, get any crossfire shots you can onto Snip. So that's uh, Odin Mortis's options. But, you know, you did say they did manage to quite uh, perform as well as they wanted to. This is Mouse Sports against Virtus Pro. Um, but they probably learned from that. They, they know that if it does come to the firefight in this little square, um, what exactly they shouldn't do, what exactly they should do. And that's again against a team like Virtus Pro, who, no offense to Oda Mortis, but are kind of a little bit better. Yeah, they're, they're, they're just a level above right now. And that, that kind of applies throughout. But we are seeing Oda Mortis kind of changing things up here. Thoris has made his way right back to the cap point. Threaten and Kurtz playing the city section. And well, this looks as though at least Oda Mortis are working this one out. Ketavan has been spotted down there, down by that five line. And they're just waiting for the engagement to really begin. Oda Mortis seems as though they're kind of putting all the pressure on Thoris here to be the kind of bait almost. And you can see just in the kind of wings, <laughs> DJ Red Deep, Uncrow, and everyone else just laying in wait for hopefully a bit of an engagement. A couple of blind shots coming out. None yet connecting, as you can see in the top left, as Mouse Sports retain that full HP. And with 4 minutes and 14 seconds left, I'm waiting to see what Mouse Sports now bring out. Because last time, they never got to this point. By now, Virtus Pro completely and utterly unraveled them. Now they're going for a bit of a city presence. Now I want to see where they kind of take that. Yeah, they can, they've got a few options. They can push straight in, just to see if they can find anything from, uh, from the side of Owner Mortis. And probably the most likely thing they'll do is hope there's an I3 on its own, push in, take it out very quickly, and then move on from there. Obviously, if you have one tier eight tank down, it's very hard to come back from that. Uh, that's exactly what Elian and Snip wanted to do. They've got the two, two autoloaders of the team, 3.6k uh, damage that they really have to unleash all six shells from that autoloader. Um, but Ketafan and Carmen have joined in as well. XP has gone forward to try and get some proxy spots. Now, uh, Mouse Sports will know there's nothing in a 50 meter radius around this, ha around this house, probably about actually 40 to 30 meters considering how big the house is. Uh, Elian's now gonna peek around it's a very dodgy position because if anything from uh, Odin Mortis does decide to peek across there, they'll be able to get the shots in. But at the end of the day, Kurtz being spotted now, it could be trouble for Mouse Sports as they are kind of in the middle of the map. Yeah, indeed. They've put themselves out on a bit of a limb. Carmen's finally been spotted. As you mentioned, Threaten and Kurtz are pushed up. Kurtz quickly swinging that turret around just in case Alien decides to go for a bit of a peek here. Not going to make his way through. One shell will, however, land. Kurtz is now down to 1069. And this is a very tentative game. We do see that one member split off. That's Nears Pazorni down by that five and six line still. Couple of shells coming through. No connections just yet. That was from Threaten, I do believe, just laying one fly. Or it might have been actually from Ketavan coming towards him. So we are still seeing their defensive posture now with Oda Mortis, who went on the initial aggression, but didn't find what they wanted. So they've kind of gone back to their defensive posture and gone, OK, let's turtle down, let's play this smart, and let's make Mouse make the first move. And they're going to do exactly that. Calm's going forwards. He's got Ketavan to the right, Alien behind, and we'll see Snip join in the fun as well with his 5100. So pretty much all the firepower Mars Sports has has gone forwards. They're going to get the hold down position for Carmen. Ketavan's going to connect a fantastic shell. I, actually, I think he got punished earlier. I think that was from a previous engagement. So DJ Red Deep getting away with that one. But that was a fantastic shot from the right onto uh, uh, onto Kurtz from Nia Bazorni. Uh, Uncrow's also taken one. That was the initial shot of the game. And it does look like Mouse Sports is starting to apply the pressure, and it's quite a significant amount. The only real weak spot they have at this point is Nia Pazorni in that IS3 on his own. But you've got Carmen and you've got Ketavan ready to do the crossfire if it does come down to it. And uh, Odin Mortis have to be very careful. They've got 1 minute and 45 seconds. Yeah, indeed. Aliens already kind of showed their hand there. Ankro received another shell. He's now down to 644. The weakness has been starting to be exploited here by Odin Mortis. They're going to have to back away as Mouse Sports continue their push. The T1 of Sharthak is keeping full eyes on this. Thoris now picking up the mantle of where we saw that rather damaged Ankro. No shell will connect. And 1 minute 25 left. This is a very low damaging game so far. Car 
Garmin is focusing down Kurtz, but look at that. Finally, Thoris gets that shell he wanted, but Alien pushed around the side. Thoris gets taken down just a touch. But here we go. There's the damage mouse boards needed. Two shells connect back to back. Thoris and DJ Red Deep going fairly low here. And now this spells trouble. Kurtz needs to get in. Threat needs to get in. One by one, Odin Mortis are using this one small house for cover, hoping it can keep mouse boards at bay. Threat is pushing in. 58 seconds left. Kurtz is in a great place. Can they somehow catch out mouse boards here? That is the big question. Snip is now split off. He's got the attention of DJ Redeep and Thoris. Those two battling out, but Snip lands the shell. Thren finally comes in, but it may be too little too late. DJ Redeep down to 93 HP. Snip gets sent back, though. 3-5-2 left towards him. Thren is completely oblivious, but look at this. Kurtz is in trouble. Surrounded by Carmen and Kedavan. This should be over, but they did not land the shells they needed. And DJ Redeep will take down Snip. This can turn until Nears Pazzoni did just that. He did the damage he needed onto Uncrow. Carmen will find Kurtz. And we are seeing threaten the one man standing with 20 seconds pretty much left here facing off against almost the entirety of mouse boards this has fallen drastically in favor to mouse boards here these guys have done the job that they needed to do so early on 365 hp left and there we have it mouse boards will claim the first map and look extremely good going forward in this one because magus is the only one left and he is battling it right now with voil but there we have it mouse boards will pick it up with the tier points and obviously with that last kill would have been theirs anyway as much as i love magus i don't I don't think he could have taken up six of them, but hey ho. That was a great bit of play coming out from Mouse Boards there, and they focused them down individually really well, I've got to say, even when they were split up. Yeah, it was it was perfect, really. They mm. found the weakness in Oda Mortis, which was the two tanks sitting behind the base, and uh, they just they just took them down. It was dis disjointed play from Oda Mortis completely. They had tanks here, they had tanks there, and they couldn't support each other. Yeah, there was uh, they had Oda Mouse Boards had two tanks to the left and one to the right, and they just got the crossfire perfectly. And at the end of the day, you can't really sit around when you know mouse sports are going to push forwards. Mm. You need to play on the aggression. You need to find that weak spot. Yep. Uh, I think the best thing they could have done is just push all their tanks onto Nia Pazorni, take him down, uh, because at the end of the day, if they didn't do that, which they didn't, they're just going to get focused out. They know they're going to lose. There's no, they might as well go for the gamble than yep. go for the certain loss. Uh, and I think Oda is once again showing that they're not the strongest team, certainly from the north on Ensk. Yeah, and I've got to say, it, Thoris was completely out of that battle. Or was it Threat? And I can't believe one of them was completely aside from it. They stayed on full HP to the very end. They yeah, could not. It was Threat, wasn't it? And there was two battles going on, and he could not decide where to go, and it just kind of ended up him being completely removed from the actual exchanges and just you know, pretty much leaving his team with a massive disadvantage. So hopefully there's going to be some issues resolved. I think some of them might be having connection issues on their end, so hopefully that's not going to hinder them too much. But I've got to say it, Mouse Sports seem to have perfected that one a little bit. It's not just that initial plan. It's got a mid-game and a late game that they're now kind of bringing into fruition rather than just being, hopefully this crossfire kind of works. Nice to see them adapting it. Uh, Nis Pazzoni did well as well. He kind of won the exchange down that five line that opened up kind of the flank that came in. It just unfolded very, very nicely for them. I'm glad to see it's kind of evolved since the initial days of playing against Virtus Pro where it just got kind of unraveled. But if you do want to check that game out as well, do go onto the WOTProLeague.com site. Make sure you watch that VOD because it's well worth a watch because I love seeing the adaption of tactics because it's, it's, it's a great way to see the teams kind of evolving as well. You're seeing these teams mm. gain to their strength. And I've got to say it, I really did not think Mouse would pick that one up. Watching them play it before, I was like, yeah. I don't really have the faith here in the nicest way, but... But, the, but then again, I mean, Mouse Sports did exactly what happened to them. Yeah, They, they just pushed forwards and, and got the initiative. Well, Virtus Pro pipped them to the post last time. They pushed forwards and got the initiative. So, yeah. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. I, I, do, li I do like seeing that kind of happen. So they aren't just going... Oh, okay. I guess that went wrong before. Maybe it was a player playing badly, but they actually rethought, you know, thought their whole strategy, went back in depth, and kind of went, okay, this is where we need to change it. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the kind of weak points. This is how we can do better. And obviously, you, there's no way to improve better than playing against the best teams. Yeah. And obviously, this is why I love this league is the fact that every single team gets their chance to improve. Yeah. And it's just it allows it to happen. And it's the beauty of the whole kind of coming through the A series, going through Go Four, because you kind of get that natural progression. And obviously, you get to. Kind kind of taste the big leagues if you do play in the go fours because you get all the top teams still playing in it and you can just test out these strategies going well i can see why that works you know yeah. what i mean you can kind of test it out firsthand hopefully they will not take too much longer we are just playing on the players to get themselves sorted out and as soon as that is we will be jumping into the tank picks do not fear but the next map will be steps now this is a completely different map to what we normally see um let's say on the city maps it's nowhere near that sort of um 
strategy used. There's nothing even comparable, really. It's it's a completely different kettle of fish. So, you know, let's ignore that first map, essentially. That's, yeah. You know, individually, I don't think Odomortis played bad. I just think they got completely outplayed, <laughs> um, strategy-wise. Mm. But Steps is a bit different now. What do you think we're going to see here? So I guess Steps is that map which we could find something very unusual in terms of tank picks. You know, mm -hmm. we saw the T32. We're going to see the Pershing almost certainly. It's uh, really Oda Mortis's lineup to pay, take yep. two Pershings. But we have jumped into tank picking. We've got the double T1 from both. That's going to uh, say that we're going to have five tier 8 tanks from both teams as well. So expect that one to come. Um, I think probably the MX-90s and T69s will be picked at the beginning because they are the standard picks and you're not giving them anything away with them. So T69, MX-90 for an Oda Mortis. It's probably going to be repeated by Mouse Sports. Um, and towards the later game, we're probably going to see a T32 get come in, although Mouseports used it against Virtus Pro, and well, Denova used it against Virtus Pro, Pro, and it didn't go well at all. And I think every team watched that and realized maybe not such a good idea. And it didn't work for Kazakru against Team WD either, so mm. Mm, not really happy with it. Uh, double AMX 90 from Mouseports, AMX 90 Pershing from Odomoy. So that initial Pershing pick uh, is probably going to indicate that Odomoy is going to go for their standard lineup, which is the double Pershing. Um, for this map, Steps. Obviously, being such a big open map, as Joe will explain in a minute, it's all about getting to those key positions, uh, getting that initial damage down, depending on which side you go on, uh, and just getting the information. And what's interesting about Steps is you can't really get the information as well with a T1 as you can with an AMX 1390 in like a map like Himmelsdorf. It's all about that scout play. Um, you have to be a brilliant scout player. You have to be brilliant at connecting the shells. You have to have everything um, going for you for on this map. Um, now just waiting for Mouseports to pick their next couple of tanks. Probably going to be, I reckon, a T69 and a Pershing or an MX-1390 and a Pershing like uh, Oda Mortis has. Um, just going to be really interesting to see if they're actually going to pick the T32 or not. Uh, I think there's about a 50-50 chance. Honestly, it hasn't worked so far for any team. I think maybe just down to the fact that the Russians picked it, these teams are starting to pick it, and obviously that's how it's been wor working since day one. The Russians pick a, a lineup then the uh, rest of the, the leagues kind of follow. Uh, it's starting to happen a little bit less. We saw the 416 being pioneered from uh, the get-go as soon as released for the European team. Uh, so maybe not, maybe. Uh, T69 Pershing is going to be the pick for Mouseports as predicted. High five, Ollie. And, uh, I'm glad you're having fun over there. <laughs> Next picks for Odomort is going to come out in a, a few seconds. Probably going to be uh, the last one. It's probably going to be a Pershing, I believe. Uh, so far, sitting on double AMX 3090, Pershing double T1. Still got a few tanks to pick. It is going to be a Pershing, which I'm happy about because they actually took it back on this one and mines with the double Pershing lineup. It's a, it's, it's a tank that really suits the team. Has uh, all the, t the boxes ticked. Not really anything bad with it, apart from the fact it doesn't have an autoloader. If it had an autoloader and a normal <laughs> loading thing, it would be OP. But yeah, I guess that goes for every tank. Imagine having like a, a FV4183B with an autoloader and a normal gun. It'd be insane. It'd be mental. Um, now looking for the uh, Mouse Sports' last pick. Probably going to be a Pershing as well, although they could go for that T32. Or they could go for something completely unusual, like a 416, which I guess is not that unusual, but teams definitely not liking that one as much. But Mouse Sports going to do the exact opposite and go for it. Just to kind of confuse you, that's that's why they're doing it. But uh, I'm, I'm still waiting to see it kind of come into its strength here. We haven't seen a team pioneer it. We haven't seen anyone really come into play. Um, I, I, I'm not sure yet. I, I, I don't know if I, I feel it has a place here. I, what are your thoughts towards it at the moment? It's got a good rate of fire. It's fast. Um, HP pool's not great at 1.2k. Gun depression is just dire because of the way the tank is built. So yeah. if you can get into a position where it can just sit there and do insane damage, it has the 320 average damage gun, the same as the T32, then it's going to be fantastic. Otherwise, going to be pretty hard. <laughs> well, both teams are ready, I do believe. So hopefully we can get this one starting in just a second. First map did go in favor to Mouse, but let's find out the second map, which will be Steps. Steps is the other open map in the map pool, being 1,000 by 1,000, having no urban areas. There are three primary routes of attack, the trench, the rocky area to the left, and the middle road. The road offers direct routes to the enemy's base, but despite having a staggering amount of cover along the way, you are vulnerable to attack from all sides. 
The trench area provides for great engagements as it's only a few hills and rocks to cover the teams. Most of the engagements occur around this rock, the winner of which gains a crucial foothold on the map. The rocky left area provides the most cover for attacking and defending teams. It's essential that you pick tanks that can traverse from one side of the map to the other rapidly. They also must be able to get to the various key locations as quickly as possible. That is the key to victory. So, welcome to the second map. As Joe said, it will be steps now. In the south, in blue, it will be Mouseports. Currently, one map up to the good. Facing off against Odin Mortis in the south in that golden yellow. So, what are we seeing so far? So, Mouseports kind of doing an unusual one. We don't usually see that. Elian playing the MX-090 going to the left, where the rest of the team just goes forwards. Nia Bazzorni leading the charge with his AMX-1390. So, very unusual start for Mouseports. While Odin Mortis is doing the standard thing that is pushing all tanks over towards the trench. You've got the T69s there, the MX-30 E90s, and everything in between. So standard style for an Odin Mortis, a little bit unusual for Mouse Sports, although probably because the MX-30 90, as I was mentioning, is probably the better uh, scout in general. It can get to places faster. It's got the better view range at 425 than, say, a T1, which is pretty much useless on steps. Yeah, indeed. I want to see how Mouse Sports can evolve this one. They're in a bit of an interesting position, as you mentioned. Maybe they've got something kind of waiting back here to make you know something happen from it. But it, it's a really strange start in my eyes. But we'll see what happens. I, you know, I, I don't want to start kind of hedging my bets early on. I'm normally completely wrong by this, but I'm still sticking with Odin Mortis on this map, <clears throat> purely for the fact that they're starting in sort of a normal. Uh, capacity, but I, I'm, I'm not sure yet. I'm still a little bit curious to see where they're going to go with uh, this for Mouse Sports. But who do you think is going to be the key player here? I think Elian is. He, he seems to be, you know, despite being the team leader, he's always the one who seems to make the best moves and the best decisions and just yep. plays fantastically, like in the previous game on Ensk, doing 3,028 damage with his AMX 5100. So he would have had to really reload twice, which is amazing considering the 5100 only has about a 50 second reload. Well, it has a 50 second reload and the, the engagement was only about a minute and a half, two minutes. So mm -hmm. that was fantastic to see. Um, but if you haven't seen the 416, well, a bit of downtime, you can see it here. The tank turret is right on the back, but regardless, he's going to try and get some shots up. Obviously, being a very good sniper and dealing a lot of damage. So Odom always trying to find some blind ones, although they will not do it so badly. Snip got down to 115, and he's kind of caught out in the open, as, as is Ketavan. He's taking one. He's down to one, two, three, two. Yeah, it's a fairly long-range battle, though, at the moment. It's, uh, both teams being kept at arm's length. Threaten's not sure where he needs to put his attention, as there were spots down that one and two line, and obviously Magus and Devil did call him over to be <clears throat> back up almost. But other than that, it is really tentative between the two. No one wants to kind of outstay their welcome. No one wants to peek too far. And there's no one making that initial push, which we normally see. You've got to make that initial push. I, I mean, Devil definitely hasn't come out the better for this. We've seen that before. Kazakru played this tactic, uh, Dinova played this tactic against uh, Virtus Pro, and that tank on the ridge actually took a lot of damage. Yeah. And we can already see Mouse Sports playing it very similar to Virtus Pro and getting the same results at the end of the day. Okay, Devil hasn't gone down, but he's mm. gone down to 5 5 7. So that's over pretty much, no, it's exactly half HP minus 7 H. It's minus 7 HP. So uh, Odin Moore is starting to make a move, though. They've got a couple of AMX 1390s up here or an AMX 1390 and a T1. Um, they're going to be trying to find their way onto Elian, and he probably will get caught out as he's on his own, unsupported. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, this is a great move from Odin Mortis. I want to see if they can execute this properly. As you said, there's players to be caught out individually, and this could at least allow Odin Mortis a way back into this one after receiving so much damage. But they have completely missed at least one of the players here. They need to at least find one of the others. Maybe they'll catch a glimpse momentarily they are making their split. Alien now has been spotted, threatened, swinging that turret right around. He's going to be backing away here. Devil lining up, hopefully going to get these connecting. Doesn't land the shell. This is huge. Alien's just about got away there, unscathed, down the defilade of the hill. Devil and Threat need to find another way to challenge here, and this is worrying. It's very worrying because Mouseport's now two of the tanks of Odin Mortis, the two primary firepower tanks, the AMX 90s are out of position and won't be able to support the rest of the team. That gives Mouseport's a way in. They've got four tanks with... Uh, the AMX-3090, the Pershing, the T-69, and the 416 all ready and waiting. But they doesn't, don't seem to have taken the bait. They haven't gone in. They know that three of the damaging tanks of Odin Mortis are still over there, as Devil does find x Peter, But it doesn't really matter, as the T-1 isn't that useful on steps. It's too big of a map. Uh, the spotting range is too small, about 220 meters. Although Devil does take another shot. He's down to 314. 
Yeah, Devil's not doing too well there. As you may have noticed, Alien backed away in that situation, got, got to almost higher ground and then just played it smart. So there's him uh, in position. But so far, tank-wise, obviously, uh, Odin Mortis are in charge. But you take into account HP in position. I'm not sure right now. Mouse sports are not at a disadvantage, let's just say. The HP is drastically in their favor. Only Ketavan and Snip really receiving a shell, excluding XP in that T1. As you mentioned, not the most useful person, but look at this. Threaten perfect place to get some shells connecting towards Ketavan there. Long range play coming in. He's down to 994, and that may just allow a little bit of movement for the likes of Yukai and you know the, the kind of bigger tanks that are still kind of stuck down by this eight line. It certainly would. It gives them some uh, breathing room, which is always good. But uh, I think from this point onwards, it's just about keeping oh, Devil safe. Look at but Elian's going to connect onto Threat, and he gets punished. Yeah, Threat is now in trouble. He's backing away, but it's too little, too late. He's down to 373. He's getting out of there as fast as possible, but a couple more shells, and he is done for. Two tanks hot on his heels, but finally the cavalry arrives. Alien receives one shell. That's going to knock him back for a second, at least. And they can reset, and they can hopefully get back into this one. Devil playing it really well, expecting that play coming out. Put himself in a kind of defensive position early on, but it's not stopping Mouse just yet. Threat now now lining up, misses the shell onto Nice Bazzoni. That could mean trouble. Yukai getting into the matter now. Hopefully he can get the connections that Threaten just wasn't there. Nice Bazzoni will survive, but Alien now has two tanks staring right at him. Yukai in a little bit of an open position, but he could get this one. Devil is being engaged by Nice Bazzoni. Devil's down to 79 HP. He's been eliminated. Yukai still trying to chase down Alien. There's the connection he needed. Maga should fall to this, but look at Voil as well. They're both hunting him down, and Yukai did not get the time to land those shells, and we are seeing a bit of a collapse of mouse sports towards even that five, seven and eight line. Yeah, mouse sports doing very well, finding the weakness, which was Devil in his uh, MX 39. He was down to 331, so uh, Nia Pazzoni had no trouble taking him out. He was on 100% HP, but Elian keeps on getting punished by Magas in his T1. It's about 150 HP with that 20 millimeter Spano. Uh, Thoris and Carmen also having a little bit of a, an engagement, and Carmen's going to push in. Yeah, Carmen is not holding back in this one. Kedavan is backing him up as is Snip. The T1 has fallen. They've got every right now to push into Thoris. He's only got 925 HP. He's now going to feel the force of Mouse Sports. Kedavan coming up over that ridge. Carmen around the left flank. He's got only so many times he can take these shells and take the damage. He's down to 119. One more shell connecting, and he is out of there. That'll come from Kedavan. And Mouse Sports are in dire straits. Onkro was tracked. Threaten is damaged. It's not looking good. It certainly isn't looking good. And Threaten and Uncrow, they do have the potential to take it back, although they've taken a lot of damage. And now two oh, tier 8 tanks word. down for the worst. Kedavan's going to have no trouble taking him out. He doesn't have to worry about reloading because he has got the Pershing. Yeah, indeed. Threaten still has those shells left, but can he do anything here? One five six. He's going to go one on one with Kedavan here. Down by that hill, down by the trenches. Carmen's joined in as well. It's a 2v1. He knows it's game over. That 4 and 6 receives a big shell, though. 407. Here comes Uncro to save the day, hopefully. Oh, he doesn't get the shell connection. That could be the undoing right now. Uncro's going back in for more, though. He's trying to protect Threaten in this situation. He's trying to make them back away, but that happens, and that has undone the situation drastically. Uncro now the only man standing with almost the entirety of Mouse Boards against him. This is going to be the longest two minutes of his life, even if he stays alive. He has got the entirety of Mouse just getting in towards him. They're all surrounding him. Kedavan and Carmen, the only two he can see, but now Snip appears, and now it's trouble. 145 left onto Carmen, but look at this. 311, 65, one more shell, and he is out of there. And we have just seen Mouse Boards looking dominant once again. Odin Mortis, I'm so sorry, but Mouse Boards, you just spanked it there. I've got to give him that. They lost one tier one tank, and that is it. That was impressive. It was extremely impressive. <laughs> and I think what's more impressive is the fact that most of their tanks were on like sub three, four, yeah. 400 HP. They were all damaged. One was on 400 HP. And that's just down to the fact that they play it perfectly. As soon as one tank takes a lot of damage, reverses, let the other tank take the damage. And that's just, you know, World of Tanks 101. It's, yep. it's a skill you need to learn very quickly, otherwise you're going to be taken down. Uh, and Odomo is not quite doing that. I mean, Devil went way too low at the beginning. 3-3-1, three, three, then obviously near Pozzoni, obviously Mouseball would see their way in. They go and take him out. That leaves one tier eight down, there's Odomo is one tier eight tank down for the worst. And from that point onwards, it's, it's extremely hard to get back into the fight. Uh, Odin Morris tried their best. That's why so much damage was uh, taken onto Mouse Sports. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it wasn't really a hard fight for them at all. They could just uh, continue playing like they did, make sure they don't give away too many advantages, don't make sure they don't take too much damage so they don't start losing tier 8 tanks. And I've got to perfect. say it.
Mouse sports look like the mouse sports of old here. Yeah, it did. For really. the last couple of play days, Odin Mortis has looked, you know, like they can be challenging Dignitas, Virtus Pro, as they've done, and they've beaten those teams mm. previously as well. The one and two losses you see by the top three teams are generally Odin Mortis at the moment. But in this game, mouse sports look so dangerous. And you mentioned it. These guys can turn up, and they're doing that right now. They look collected. They're executing perfectly. They're not even just sticking to their standard strategies. We saw that on Ents. They started off normal. They kind of deviated slightly to kind of take into account what the opposition was doing. And then they executed their original strat the way they wanted once they dealt with the threats. And they've done it again here. The way Devil kind of split it off early on, mm. they dealt with that as a bit of an adaption you don't necessarily always see. They had those two tanks folding in on them there. They went back down to the trenches, ended the game there. And I, I love the adaption coming out from that. It's just absolutely fantastic. Mouse Sports really have class now on their side. And if they keep this up, they're going to be well above you know, sitting in ninth position. Mm. There's no way they should be down in that position when they're playing like this. I've got to say it, they're... They're looking really good going forward. And as you mentioned, they've kind of faced their bigger opponents now. They're onto the kind of mid-table teams. They, they've kind of gotten their hard opponents out of the way. Mm. And they picked up some surprising results against them as well. I, who was it they beat? One of the top teams. Was it Virtus Pro or was it Dignitas? i calling me out on this one. I'm I calling think you out it, here. I think it was He's the expert. Virtus Pro. I'm pretty sure it was Virtus Pro. Okay, we're getting you know, a, a, a bit of a helping hand. We've got one of our interns running around getting facts, okay? You don't know him. He's D... D I, I don't know his name. He's some random guy from a different game. But, yeah, you know, obviously, the mouse sports are showing their class here. They start off in quite, you know, a bit of a spike they're taking on Virtus Pro. Mm. That, that's one way to really secure your place, going, wow, these guys can play. But they, they let it slip a little bit. They weren't quite on point like they have been before. They can deal with the mid-table stuff as well. Normally, they're not a team that lets it drop against the Kazan Cruz, the Spales. But this time around, they have been until this game. And Oda Mortis are kind of on a dangerous point now because Mouse Sports are up two maps. They only need one more to secure the victory. Mm. And this has been so quick as well. It's, it's, it's been insane. It's un unbelievable. And maybe our... Uh, hold on, I think our intern was wrong. I think we need to fire our intern. I'm sorry, D-Man. You're going to have to go back to that other company of yours. You're just not doing well enough at Wargaming. It I'm was, sorry. It, it was Team Dignitas. <sighs> the end of the beat, you know? It was Team Dignitas. Can't trust them, you know? Right, please. Anyway, back to this game. Um, I'm not sure what the next map will be, because I think one of them is just restarting the computer. Because yep. they, they've had a couple of issues, you may have noticed. Uh, there's a little bit of downtime in between. This is why we talk so much. As much as you think this is what I enjoy doing to you so people. You like hearing the sound of your voice. I really do. Is. I just put playback up really loud, so I can just only hear myself. It's fantastic. I can't hear you most of the time. It's, it makes it much more enjoyable. Thanks for that. <laughs> Kidney right. shots. I love it. It's always good fun. <laughs> I already mocked the haircut, so I kind of need to... You're just, just going to go through my anatomy one by one. I don't go through head. anything to do with your anatomy, but thank Brilliant. you for the offer anyway. To, why do you have to bring it down to that level? I don't get it. I mean, it's just unbelievable working with you. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's a unique experience, right? Yeah. Unique is a good word. Bring back red dire eye. Might be, <laughs> uniquely dire might be uniquely another word. Uniquely dire. Yeah. Wow, thank you. That's, that's great. Just because I turned you down, don't you worry. It's fine. It's, it's absolutely fine. I think I've broken everyone in the room. <laughs> Melly's dead. Come on, just dig yourself what? a hole. Let's see what you got. Come I'm, on. I'm, I'm fine. I can bring it back because Himmelsdorf will be the next map, which is a city map. Now, bearing right. in mind, we haven't seen too much of that, excluding Ensk, which we know Mouse Good Sports had the... Thanks, buddy. Um, I try and keep it professional. Um, do you have any sort of insight towards this map, or should <laughs> I just escort you outside and get Stephen back in? Uh. I'd... Probably not a good idea. He's going to start insulting We've got the another caster together. we can bring in anyway. We'll sit him down. He's, he's not quite dressed yet. Just borrow him your jacket and we'll see how it goes. Yeah, if you want. I don't, I don't know. No, <laughs> no, I'm all right. He's, he's rubbish. He can only do play-by-play -play anyway. He's, he's, mm. he's not good enough. It's all right. He's one-dimensional. But as we mentioned, Himmelsdorf, it will be the next one coming up here. One of the decisive maps. Now, let's look back to Ensk then with this in mind, because it is pretty much a city map. We saw the exchange going down in the city. Mm. And the biggest kind of fault that, well, Odin Mortis had was the fact that they were so spread out. They didn't have any focus towards it. Once their initial game plan was kind of halted, let's say, they didn't really know what to do then. They were on the back foot, and Mouse Sports just took the advantage, mm. like Pro did to them. Now, Himmelsdorf doesn't necessarily allow for that, but what do you think we might be seeing here? I think we'll see just the, the standard Himmelsdorf tactics. I mean, okay, if Mouse Sports take a, like a T69, we could, something, we could see something unusual, like a, a T69 push onto the hill, along with a T1 to try and get the 50 meters proxy mm. spot. Although I think it's quite, un, quite unlikely. I mean, the standard kind of lineups just predict a tri triple AMX 5100, double IS3, or, or vice versa, triple IS3, double AMX 5100. That's pretty much what, we, what we're going to see. 
Um, weather, we'll see what Team WD did, which is push through into the middle with most of their tanks, especially the IS-3s, and then trying to come around and really do the damage from the sides. Well, I'll have to wait. But Mouse Balls are going to be expecting that. They know exactly how to play from that position. We've seen them beat the likes of Virtus Pro from that position before. So um, they're very good when they're, when they're on the you know, back foot as well mm. as when on the front foot. Uh, they're very good at taking initiative. They're very good at defending. Um, and what's really fantastic, like we saw on, on the steps, is you know players like Elian and Snip, they can play on their own. They're quite happy to play on their own. They can re read the map perfectly. They can read exactly what the tactics are going to be. And they can kind of just play like a, a tank army just by themselves. So uh, just amazing uh, situational awareness in general. And although it doesn't really make as much a difference on Himmelsdorf as it does on you know your steps and your Prokhorovkas, it certainly does count for something. Uh, double T1 from Mouseports to start us off with. And expecting the same from uh, Odomois, although they sometimes seem to go for that T1 and a tier 8 tank alongside it, just because that doesn't give away the fact that you're going to take five tier 8 tanks from the start, although everyone knows you're going to take five tier 8 tanks because you can't really take anything else since the TVT-2 has been removed and you wouldn't take a TVT-2 on Himmelsdorf unless you're clinically insane. Um, although we did try two Bison line up on Himmelsdorf in training before, it didn't really do so well and that was before the Bison was nerfed. So uh, it still had 228 millimeters of penetration and still had the shell travel time of old. Um, mm. But yeah, it could come back in. I guess it's been buffed again in uh, yeah. 8.9 a little bit. The shell travel time is better. Uh, but I think the penetration is just too low. Uh, okay, 185 with heat is enough for like a 5100 and an IS-3, uh, uh, an AMX-3090, and maybe even a T69. But for your Pershing and stuff like that, it just it's just too low, I think. Uh, double T1 coming out for Odo Mortis as well, making it two T1s for each side. Um, giving away the uh, chase of uh, these five tier eight tanks can be picked by both teams next. Probably the triple IS3, double AMX 5100 for Mouse Sports, and probably the same for Odin Mortis. Maybe a Pershing will come out. Um, Odin Mortis always seems to do well with the Pershing, although it didn't do so well in the previous game. Um, sometimes they just get a little bit carried away and get caught out of position. And with steps, it's all about not taking the initial damage, um, which they did. Which which, when it came down to the firefight, allowed Mouseports to get in and get out very quickly without taking too much damage to the self and obviously taking a tier 8 tank down. So just waiting for the next picks. Um, just going to prompt the teams to pick their next tanks. Probably going to be a double IS-3. Or is that an IS-334? <laughs> no. I was about to say, what is an IS-3? <laughs> what's an IS-34? They've just, they just been making up tanks in the, the downtime. They're yeah. like, let me get my paint out and just kind of add some stuff to it. IS-334. Yeah. Mm. Next gen. Like 34 generations of IS-3, I'd be scared what that would be, to be honest. God like knows. a drone tank <laughs> would be insane, but like a mech. Uh, double IS-3 from both teams. Um, no, double IS-3 from Mouseports and an IS-3 AMX-600 for Oda Mortis, uh, making it two T1s, two IS-3s for Mouseports, IS-3, AMX-600, and two T1s for Oda Mortis. So I expect them, although not the same picks at the start, I expect the same lineups to come out from both teams at the end. Maybe with the variations from the 5100 and the IS-3, might, one might pick three 5100s, one might pick three IS-3s. But the next pick from Mouseports will be the double 5100, uh, making it double 5100, double IS-3, double T1. Um, and for Oda Mortis, it's going to be an IS-3 and a 5100, making it a double MX-5100, double IS-3 for them and two T1. So mirrored lineup so far as we move into the last tank picks from both teams. If they are going to try anything unusual, anything quirky, it will be in this last pick. Um, I think it's unlikely. I think the only thing, two things that are going to come out, oh, just as I say that, Mouseports take a Jagdpanther 2. What? So they're going to pick that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the 490 average damage gun on that one. Uh, very high penetration, good accuracy, good aim downtime. Reload is not too bad, considering. The only thing that really doesn't have is HP, sitting at 1,150. And the armor, obviously, being a German tank destroyer at tier 8 is quite low. Uh, about the same as the normal Jag Panther. Uh, last pick for Oda Mortis will be the AM5100. Um, yeah, but this this Jag Panther pick is throwing me off a little bit. Um, I I can kind of see how it could work if you could get it behind and flank, but it as a, as a tank destroyer, it's not really going to work in those just long road situations because yeah okay it'll get the initial shell off but then it'll have to reverse behind the corner where it can receive two shots from an AMX 5100 and with such low HP two shots will be over half of its HP um, which will be disastrous and um, 
Yeah, the gun is the only real good thing about that tank, so they have to utilize it well. And we've never seen it on Himmelsdorf ever. I don't think I've ever seen it in three years of playing World of Tanks. Um, so whether it will work or not, we'll have to wait and see. Although they might as well try it since they're two nil up at this point. Yeah, as you mentioned, they've got room to breathe. There's three more maps to be played, obviously, including this one. So if they do want to try something out, now is the time. But it's a really weird pick, as you mentioned. It's not something you, we, we occasionally see kind of being dabbled in, you know, like the Pershings were, the T-32s. This is a completely off-the-wall pick. But, hey, maybe Mouseports have something that we don't know about. Maybe there's a little secret to what they're getting going on. But we'll find out here on Hildersdorf. I'm looking forward to it. And Oda Mortis must be kind of scratching their heads as well, going, what the hell are we coming up against? Maybe going to offset their game, maybe make them adapt. I don't think so. I think Odin Mortis are, you know, that kind of secure team. And if they're going to turn it around, they need to here. And maybe that one pick on Alien could be the defining factor. If they went for the wrong choice, that could at least allow Odin Mortis a way back in here. Bearing in mind, Odin Mortis are further up the table than Mel Sports. These guys are sitting in fifth. Odin Mortis were first previously. You can't take them lightly. And as much room as there is to breathe, I certainly would not want to be risking my chances against Odin Mortis. They're a team that can cause, you know, turnarounds. They've done it before. They can certainly do it again. I'm looking forward to see how much of a, you know, a weak point that Jad Panther may just be because it could cause such a knock-on effect if that one tank isn't there. If, you know, they chose that rather than, let's say, a 5100, it could cause a huge upset. But, guys, let's get you that introduction video to what you normally see on Himmelsdorf. Himmelsdorf is a city maps of city maps. It's a small one being 600 by 600 meters. There are three routes of attack, the hill, the banana, and the train side. The middle area is relatively easy to push, however, can end up in disaster as you can be flanked from every side. The road, often called banana, allows for direct head-on assaults, but requires a lot of resources. Both the railroad area and the road next to it are good routes of attack being very open and straight. However, for those very same reasons, you can be easily caught out and taken down. The map features many densely housed areas, which provides good places for engagements and routes of attack. Teams must be aware of the various routes their opponents can take through the map, as well as the hold-down positions enemies can take throughout the entire map. The trick with Himmelsdorf is to catch an enemy tank unsupported by his teammates and then use that advantage to collapse on the entire enemy team. So, welcome into Himmels. As you may notice, there is a nice countdown timer there, but that is mostly due to the fact that both teams have the rather challenging task of having to count down from 15 after tank picking, and that held them up. But let's get into Himmelsdorf here, because in the north, in that golden yellow, it is Odin Mortis facing off against Mouse Sports in the south, who, well, at least they have their mods working now. So let's find out what we have going on here. What are they doing so far? So the only uh, thing we could be seeing at the beginning is uh, if Elian tries to get the initial shot off, do as much damage as he can. Obviously, if he does get it, it'll be taking about a third off an I3 with about 500 average damage. That can peak up to 700 if he gets the 25% uh, high roll. So Snip, near Pozzoni, there's 250 as well as Viol doing the standard thing that's pushing up the hill. Ketavan and Elian to their left. So pretty much a hill start from Mouse Sports with all their tanks, although Carmen's going to be sitting in the, the middle, making sure that nothing cheeky is coming off Oda Mortis, which we're seeing now. Yeah, Oda Mortis are just flying straight in there. Threaten and Kurtz all making their way through that central res reservation. Thoris splitting down the banana line. They are throwing everything at Mouse Sports right now. And bearing in mind, this could define if Mouse Sports win this game. Thoris is going absolutely head to head with Voil. He's not backing off, neither is he towards Ketavan. But this could be trouble. Magus backing up, but they're only tier ones. They can do so little in this. And there's such a stopping force from Mouse Sports over here. And now Thoris has to back away. He's left on 9 8 1. His tier ones are falling. Odin Mortis may have made an absolutely huge mistake. But bearing in mind, Thoris is only the bait right now. All the fire power has made its way down that three line. They have a little bit of a plan brewing here. DJ Red Deep, Thren, Uncro, all just ignoring the exchange and going straight towards the cap point. This could be an interesting outcome. A very interesting outcome. And I think the only time uh, Mouseport's going to find out is when X Peter comes around the corner. He'll be dispatched by Uncro pretty quickly. Now, Mouseport's know 100% of what Odin Mortis tax is going to be around. And it's 
going to be Snip and Nia's Bazzoni to try and deal with it. Yeah, here we go. The fire is already coming in. Threaten is the first to receive the damage from that. He's going to back away on 574, but there's the reply. Snip goes fairly low, but DJ Radeep is tracked. Uncro getting the reply in as well, but it's not really causing the damage they need. The cap is underway, but look at Oda Mortis. 574, 791, and DJ Radeep held in place, and that is the threat of it all. He's down to 161. Thoris did take out Alien in that Jad Panther. That was rendered useless, but now Threaten left all alone in the I3, pushing forward. He's just going to try and turtle down here and make that clock tick as fast as possible. Uncro and DJ Radeep creating the crossfire. Thoris still alive. Threaten as well, and Kurtz just battling it out. And they're going to try and hold them in place. Mousewarts now need to get this going because there's 18 seconds left on the board. Mousewarts need to deal with the other players of Odin Mortis. Kurtz is keeping him busy, as is Thoris. Snip's already low. Kurtz has taken down Nia's Pizzoni. This is trouble. 24 seconds. This could really go pear shaped for Mousewarts if they don't deal with the threats that are holding them in place right now. Thoris is still keeping them busy. Snip is so low. One shell can take him down. He's going to be feeling the pain of that. Ketavan has found Uncro though, so at least resetting that clock a touch, but nine seconds now remain. He needs to get the shell and get it happening fast. Five seconds. This is going right down to the wire. There's the reset they needed. It's so late though. DJ Red Deep in the meantime has found Snip, who was left on a slither Ooh. of health. Oh my word. He's come back in on Ketavan as well. Now we just see Carmen up against Threaten and DJ Red Deep. Look at the HP on Odin Mortis though. They have eight seconds to stay alive. He needs to somehow avoid this. If he can make this happen, with three seconds remaining. Odin Mortis might be able to do this. One second left. I think they might have just done it, and they have. My word, Odin Mortis at the last available second actually claimed the game they so desperately needed by such a ballsy move. And Carmen has to be kicking himself for that one. Oh, he was on his own trying to do as much damage as he could, but he was just getting <laughs> wow. kited around. He was just chasing. He was just tunnel visioning, and he got punished for it, sitting on pretty much 100% HP uh, in his I3 at the end of the game when the rest of his team was completely a that's not what you want at the end of the day. And I think uh, a very, very powerful move from Odomo is something which we haven't seen in a while. Usually we see that <laughs> tactic come from the hill as it's slightly easier to yeah. execute. But what was the best part of that map was threatened in Azaya Street. Absolutely fantastic awareness. He knew exactly when to push across the open uh, courtyard towards the, to try and get behind the church. He knew exactly when those 5100s on reload. He knew exactly what to do. And it was just amazing because he wasn't 206 HP, yeah. 300 average damage. That's a 100% kill ratio if a tank hits it and actually penetrates. So threatened with the situational awareness, he was the one who actually got the most amount of cap points. He was the one who would have won it, even if uh, DJ Red Deep did get killed in the end. I think it would have still been a win for Odin Moyes. Now, let's bear in mind, Threaten only did 348 damage. He wasn't <laughs> even involved in that aspect, but that little bit of smart play just got them back into this. It's two to one now. And Odin Mortis are more than capable of turning games quicker than that. And even Carmen, he was on full HP, as you mentioned, or pretty much there. He did 1.9, but it didn't matter. Nope. The, the, the strat they used just eliminated that factor. The damage was dealt by the couple of tanks just holding those guys in place. Snip did not know where to go. He was left on almost zero HP, and it was just like, well, we're kind of screwed here, guys. And Oda Mortis, what a great bit of vision coming out from them. I've got to say it. They may not be able to count, but they certainly can do their tactics. I'll give them that. So congratulations to them, two to one. So we will be going to Ruenberg next. Now, both city maps have kind of had the disparity on it now. And this is a bit of a hybrid map, in essence, because you mm. do get that green zone. You do get the village. It's kind of like Prokhorovka on one side and then like Yurensk on the other side. It's kind of a really weird kind of mixture. But who do you think really has the advantage here? And do you think that Oda Mortis can hold on? I've never seen Mouse Sports really play this map properly. They're not a Chasm Crew who have this uh, map down to a mm. T. I think Chasm Crew is the only team that's actually broken the meta of, of Ruenberg, but Mouse Sports definitely not. Um, Odin Morgus, we haven't really seen them that much on this map, so yep. I'm not exactly sure how they play it. I think they're going to go over towards the city a little bit more than the village. As we know, Mouse Sports do like the village and they play it very well just because every single one of their players can play independently and play fantastically. So we can jump straight into tank picking, though, as that has begun not weighing around for anyone. Double T1 from OM, double T1 from Mouse Sports, and T69 AMX 5100 from OM, uh, AMX 3090, T69 from uh, Elian from Mouse Sports. So obviously those two teams going for the AMX 3090 for the initial middle spot along the F line, which is this road as it does look like an F. Um, and obviously that's the half what? moon road. Uh, it's an F, can't you see it? As we, when we were training Euro Steel in 2011, mm. we called that the F line because it looks exactly like an F and we need references. Uh, okay. MX 1390 T69 from Odomois, MX 5100 from 
and the T69 from Mouse Sports. Last pick from Erm will be the 5100. And I believe the last pick from Mouse Sports will be the T69. So both teams going for the same lineup. For Erm, it's a double T1, a T69, 5100, uh, an MX3090, another T69, and a 5100. And the same is going to come out from Mouse Sports. So mirrored lineup. We're in for a good game then. That means it's all about the skill and the strategy as opposed to, you know, chucking that cheeky 416 that can possibly do an insane amount of damage if it gets into the right position, um, which I guess it could do. And it could work on Ruhrenberg. I don't see really why teams decide to pick it on stats where having a hull down tank means more, where Ruhrenberg is just about getting the damage down. Yeah, so we'll have to find out because the scoreline is, let's, let's keep in mind this two to one. So there's at least a chance for a turning point here. It's not going to be easy. Ruinberg is not an easy map in any way, shape or form. It does kind of allow for loads of different strategies, but some really do counter the others, even if it's just a blind choice. So we have to find out what these guys go for. Currently, Mouseports have two maps. Obviously, Odin Waters only have one. So this needs to be their turning point to bring it back all even. Let's get ready for Ruinberg. Ruinberg is one of our newer city maps, and it's fairly large, being 800 by 800 meters. There are three main routes of attack, the roads leading to the city, the road going through the middle, and the village area. Each of these have two important areas to control. The city has very large roads and plenty of opportunities for teams to flank. The long roads also provide for good sniping areas as well as corner shooting. Teams often push through the village area, and once controlled, the team can move on to the enemy's base. You should pick heavy tanks with high alpha damage for corner sniping as well as a faster tank for the middle spot. So, welcome back in. As uh, we were kindly reminded by Joe, we will be watching Ruenberg next. And this is where we need to be seeing it getting all even for Odin Mortis. Now, they will be starting in the north. They are in that gold and yellow. And in the south, it will be Mouse Sports in blue. What are we seeing so far? So, Mouse Sports playing a heavy autoloader uh, setup. In fact, all autoloaders, the MX-1500 and the quadruple, well, the triple MX, uh, tr triple T69 and the MX-3090. They're going to be pushing straight out that half moon circle, trying to get the initial spots out with Elian. Odin Mortis surprising not playing the city bush like I predicted. Most of their tanks going towards the village, leaving an AMX 5100, which they have two of, uh, in the back, ready to try and deal with anything from Mouseports in terms of cheesy pushing into the cap. So both teams opting for kind of a strange uh, tactic f f at the beginning, and I think Mouseports have kind of gone all for nothing because they're pushing straight through the half moon. Yeah, indeed, they are not stopping at all. Alien's now been spotted. Thoris has already taken down Boyle in that T1. So let's see if Odin Mortis can deal with what possibly Mouse are bringing. Alien is, is in trouble. He's down to 363. He's been melted down to below half HP. He is not getting back from this one. He's been taken down by Yukai, who's just joined the battle. So this is looking troublesome. This looks like it could be all even. It's, it certainly does, one tier 8 tank down. This is almost reminiscent of steps where Mouse Sports did this, but DJ Red Deep is caught out in the middle. He's going to be trying to connect it by a couple of MX-30 90 shells. I believe he is down to 635 and has to reload and has to run, try and get behind that defilade. Neopazorn in Ketavan looking for a shot onto anything Odomores has in the village, which they don't have much of apart from a T-69. But with one tier 8 tank down, Mouse Sports going to find it almost impossible. And considering Uncro is doing such a fantastic job of sniping and keeping the pressure on with that T-69, regardless of the fact that it only has four shells, so it's not the greatest sniper. And uh, the fact that, well, the devil only seems to be connecting one of two shells, which is not great, 50% hit ratio. Uh, but Neopazorni, Ketavan, quite happy to push aggressively despite the damage they've taken. Yeah, but look at Snip. He's all alone, and Yukai is just going to enjoy that fact. That even though Yukai's fairly low, he's on 490. He's got right into the face of Snip there, and he's allowing the fire to come in from his teammates. Thoris now pushing straight up as well. They're going to try and focus him out as soon as possible to eliminate the backup, which is arriving just as we speak. 641 left towards him, but look at Neopazorni. Look at Ketavan. They are just turning this one. I believe that's Yukai down, and now Thoris is left in a 1v3. He needs backup and he needs it now. He's getting burnt alive. He is out of there. Kelevan landed that one, and Mouse Sports spin the situation on its head. Absolutely amazing how they managed to do that. Finding the weakness in Oda Mortis, knowing exactly what all tanks are reloading, exactly what they're doing, and the fact that Oda Mortis didn't have any cover what to speak of. You can see uh, three of their tanks all die in one position. That's just not good. They're going to get surrounded and taken down, and they just got kind of caught on the rotate. A little bit of a lucky move from Mouse Sports in some respects, but you can still see Devils on 1,179 HP, and Uncro is still sitting on 100% HP, while well, Mouseports definitely have taken a bit of damage. In terms of points, the uh, the advantage is to Mouseports, they have eight points in, in the clear. So if it does go down to zero, which I don't think it will, that's the timer that is, 
um, Mouse Sports will take the win. But it's going to be reset, as we see often, the initial damage being done. And uh, both teams just happy to sit back, try and relax a bit, find their way back into the game, find a different angle to come from, try a new strategy. It does look like Mouse Sports are going off into the city. That's probably the best idea, as that's where uh, Oda Moritz are going as well. And one, with one tier 8 tank extra, they'll have the advantage of firepower, they'll have the advantage of HP, and they'll almost certainly win the city fight. Yeah, we're going to have to see what Odin Mortis can do here. Devil had to wait for that reload. He's backed away. That should be available any second now. So he's ready to rumble. Even though he's slightly damaged on 1179, he can still do so much damage here anyway. Um, Uncro sitting completely full HP. They will be kind of facing off head-to-head. -head. Mag is still alive as well on the T1. So hopefully they can keep that vision. Hopefully they can have a chance here because they can still turn this around. But it's not going to be an easy feat. Obviously, Cadavan is damaged. He's down to 813. But that's still a couple of shells. That's not going to be a one-shot kind of over and done with let's focus on the next and we are going to see these guys going head to head now Carmen has been spotted Devil's getting right in there Nears Pizzoni though will take him down oh Devil's been caught in the crossfire he's trying to back away he doesn't make it out of there and this is almost game over for Odin Mortis this is going to be the killing blow Kedavan Nears Pizzoni and Carmen alive and kicking Ankara is trying to back away on that T69 he's on reload he can actually do nothing here he's just seeing Carmen appearing around that corner he can do nothing but run away He's still got a good couple of seconds until he's available to return any sort of fire. He's dodged one, but he's backed into a corner. Carmen is there, ready to execute. And I think it's just about ready to happen. Nils Pizzoni's joined in. Kedavan from the right. And there's no getting out of it. Only Maga stands. And as much as he's a talented guy, a 1v4, I don't think it's going to happen right now. And I've got to say it, now sports, they do it in style when they do want to get these games in their, under their belt. It's very rare that you see a team come back from a tier 8 point. Uh, disadvantage, but Mouse Sports do it, and they do it with style, as you said. Just coming in, knowing exactly where the, the weaknesses of the other team, and exploiting them to their best potential. And they lost Elian, probably their best player at the beginning in his AMX 3090. Maybe he did do his job uh, of finding exactly what the whole of uh, Oda Mortis are going to do. But at the end of the day, still, you're losing your AMX 3090. It does a fantastic amount of damage, 1,440. It's got a bit of health as well, and, and it's fast. So losing at the beginning is just disastrous. And the fact that Oda Mortis couldn't cap capitalize on that, and mm. they tried something, which was really to push over towards the city. But because they had Uncro in the back and yeah. DJ Red Deep in the back in the M5100 and the T69, they were on su not supporting the... Uh, the, the, the rest of their tanks. That allowed Mouse Sports' four main firepower tanks mm. to go on three versus four, which is obviously you're going to win, especially considering they didn't take that much damage. And uh, Yukai took a lot of damage trying to reverse, get back to his tanks. I think he was yep. down to 348. And in the end, Oda Moyes being caught out, I think they got a little bit confident, a little bit cocky. Yep. And at the end, you know, you're going to get punished for that. Got to give a bit of a shout out to Karma as well. 2.7k damage, almost hitting 3k. And on a map like this, it doesn't really allow for individuals to necessarily become that big. You know what I mean? There's not like going to be a one man show because it's so, it can be really spread out for him to do that. He's clearly turned up. So credit where it's due. But uh, that pretty much will be the game in favor to Mouse Sports. But for pride's sake, and obviously the tier points and the kind of win points that add up towards the end of the season, you guys obviously need to watch all the way through here. Because if it does come down to, you know, sixth to seventh position where it's very tied up going to the offline finals, if you get, you know, one more map victory, let's say, than another team who's almost tied exactly with you, that can be where the defining moment is. So every single map does count towards the later half of the season. Hence why we play out all five. And the next one will be Prokhorovka. So not sure where to put that one while I drop my pen. Um, but I, I'm not sure where to look at this because we haven't really seen a fully open map played at the moment. It's been a little mm. bit of a hybrid city game so far. So it's going to be a bit uh, an interesting choice. But Mouse Sports clearly on a high after picking up that last map here. Yeah, they're going to be the momentum's going to be behind. The wind's going to be in their sails, I think. And uh, Prokhorovka, I think it suits Mouse Sports down to a T because they are a team that really pioneered the split pushes. Mm. Every, as I said, every single member of their team can play individually. And what yep. they do wonderfully is they have like a wolf pack of tanks, like three MX 3090s, two MX 3090s. We saw yep. Snip and Elian on uh, steps playing like that. And they're just so fantastic. They can find their way into situations which you never thought they would be able to. Uh, and obviously, Prokhorovka means such an open and expansive map, as Joe will say. Uh, it's it's one of those ones which you can just get yourself behind tanks, in front of tanks, on the side of tanks, and just do some fantastic damage. But Are you just quoting Joe now for your intros? <laughs> like, every single time I hear I a little line... I'm, not, I'm really quoting myself since I wrote, Shh, I wrote the script. Don't ruin the illusion. Joe's next door, and he's just doing it live. All just right, can't okay. see him. But do take us through the tank bits. Double T1 for Mouseports. Um, 
And I believe that's going to be repeated by Oda Moyes in the next uh, two picks. Obviously, getting those two T1s out of the way. No artillery being picked on Prokhorov, like we saw, which I think is a bit of a shame. I'd love to see artillery being reintroduced. It really adds that extra level of, of paranoia to the team. If you're sitting in your comfortable bush, you got fully you know, covered. You've got your 40% camo down. And you get hit by a Lorraine 15551. Uh, for 1,250 HP, then you're going to be, you know, what are we going to do now? We have to push in to try and get the tier 8 point advantage again. Uh, but double AMX 3090 coming out from Mouseports as their second pick. Probably going to be picking a Pershing at some point in the future. I think both these two teams, maybe Odin Mortis are going to uh, go for a double Pershing, in fact, like we've seen before on Steps and Mines. But so far, they're picking an AMX 3090 and a T69 as their next two, making it two T1s, two, an AMX 3090 and T69, obviously. The MX 3090 for the uh, the speed uh, and just the versatility. It can do pretty much everything uh, and not really bad at anything. I think the only downfall of that tank is the fact that it doesn't have gun depression and maybe the aim down time is, is slightly high at like 3.2 seconds compared to, let's say, a T69, a 2.5 second aim down time. And the time between shots for a T69 is a second shorter, which can always help in a firefight. But... Then again, a T69 can't actually one-shot an AMX 3090. It'll only do about 960 HP with those four shells. Um, and an AMX 3090 has 1,100. So one versus one, an AMX 3090 is almost certainly going to win unless it fails miserably and gets rammed for the rest of the HP, mm -hmm. which we've seen before, to be fair. Um, they're just waiting for Mouseports' next picks. Probably, I, I would consider a double T69 from them next. Um, you always want your T69s on this map. You don't have to worry about armor because it's not going to be an IS3. Although, we've seen on the 7-7 <laughs> seven seven mode, I've we've been playing mm. this weekend, a lot of the Russian teams picking the triple IS-3, which... What? Which is... On yeah, Prokhorovka? No, no, because you don't get to choose a map. It just puts oh, you into a game. So they, okay. they're expecting city maps because there's three of them, but you've got Prokhorovka, which actually <laughs> worked really well against T-69s because you can't do anything against it. Meant like, half your shots bounce, yeah. which is awful. You only do, like, 500 damage instead of, like, 1,000. Uh, yeah, double T-69, Mouseports is next pick. AMX 3090 T69 for Oda Mortis, making it double AMX 3090 double T69 double T1 for Oda Mortis. Uh, double AMX 3090 double T69 double T1 for Mouseports as well. So mirrored picked as we would have expected. Uh, as we uh, jump into the last pick for Mouseports will be the T69. Um, and the Pershing is going to come out for Oda Mortis. So they're going to pick one Pershing instead of two, mm -hmm. which is not really that bad. I guess the difference between two and one... Um, it's more about how the player feels comfortable in the tank as opposed to just the lineup. If you if you've played Pershing a lot and you're you know good at it, then you're going to be playing better than a T69 because if you play a T69, you're not very good at auto loaders. It's always a tricky uh, nut to crack. And you don't want me to make fun of you when you're saying lines like that. But yes, we are going to find out if this final map can be at least brought back into favor of Odin Mortis, just for pride's sake alone. Because after that last game, they kind of got caught out being a little bit overconfident. And they do need to rein it back in for Prokhorovka. You can't get too aggressive. You've got to play it absolutely perfectly. There's got to be that right line. You know what I mean? If those T69s go too far over, if they're playing that little bit of a death lay towards the left side, or if they're playing by, you know, the, the kind of village area, if they're playing wherever they're playing, they've got to be able to keep it exactly on point. So we'll find out here as Mouse Sports obviously do have the lead in uh, overall points. But anyway, let's find out here in the final map, which will be Prokhorovka. Prokhorovka, a large map at 1,000 by 1,000 meters, which allows teams to stretch their legs and artillery to test their skills. There are three primary routes of attack, over the left tree road, the middle area, and towards the town. The tree road is very open and flat, but has a very large number of bushes and trees that provide good cover if you're not shooting. The middle area is where the initial engagements happen as teams gather as much information as they possibly can. Both teams are fairly symmetrical and only offer small hills and brushes as cover. The middle area is where the initial engagements happen as teams gather as much information as they possibly can. The railroad that splits the map has a large number of bushes running alongside it that provides good cover and the occasional route of attack in the village and hill area. Teams should look towards taking fast tanks and artillery as they complement each other on this expansive map. 
So, welcome into the fifth and final rather expansive map. Thank you very much, Joe, which will be Prokhorovka. And in the south, it will be Odin Mortis. In the north, it will be Mouseports. And what are we seeing so far? Mouseports doing the standard, although we usually see it towards the left of the map instead of the right, pushing straight out the middle. Their triple T69 line will help them a lot with this since they have the hold down position. But Nia Pazorni and Elia trying to get the initial spots out. They're going to find Yukai and Thoris. And the first shell is going to be punished straight on to Elian down to 616. So, an aggressive start from Mouseports. They have a decent position, although Elian is kind of on his own, but it doesn't really matter on this polarized map since the whole of Odomor is are towards the left side, towards that village. They're going to be trying to get some shots onto the side of Mouseports, see if they can find their way in, and obviously having that initial HP advantage is going to help them a lot along that road, although Uncro gets punished as well. He's down to 8-6-7, um, and Thoris playing the Pershing Ooh. very well, although he's taking a couple of shells. The uh, the AP ammo from the uh, Airmix 3090 won't have trouble as much as the heat ammo from the T69 is penetrating that mantle. Yeah, so we're going to have to see who can really get ahead in this one. And so far, HP-wise, it's mouse sports. And it's no surprise there. Most of the initial exchanges, they do so well again, that penetration down. It's getting that early damage really dealt towards the other side. It's it's so impressive watching these guys. But we're going to see how Odomort is planning to get back into this. They have split off DJ Ray Deep and Devil towards the very tip of the six line. So just splitting themselves all the way down the central area. Ankro, Yukai, Magus, and the rest. And it's pretty much a bit of a Mexican standoff almost. You know what I mean? Not really, but yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Um, yeah, I think Bet you will. I think both of these two teams are going to happy. Are going to be happy just to sit back, reset the fight on Prokhorov. But we often see the first minute and a half to two minutes just both teams trying to get the advantage in terms of damage, in terms of information, in terms of position. And then once that happens, they both reset, get themselves uh, into whatever position they think is superior to the other one, and then push out from there. And that's really important to consider. And the T1s are going to start creeping their way in, trying to get some blind shots off as well. Are gonna, it's going to be important because if you do find, let's say, Snip or Ketavan along the side, then you're going to be getting back into the, into the HP pool advantage, which is going to help you a lot when it comes to the firefight. Now, I've got to ask you the question. Um, is this time for Mouseports to make a move? They've done some decent damage. They've taken Ankro fairly low. They've taken Thoris down off that ideal HP, but Alien also received a shell. What do you think it's going to take to really snap this situation here? It's going to take Mouseports to just, you know, buckle up and push in, and that's exactly what they're doing here. We've got Ketavan and Snip pushing forwards. I'm talking about these wolf packs again. It's always two or three tanks. Alien's to the right, although he's not really part of this group, um, not the popular guys group in the T69. It's the tank you play if you're the best player, although it depends. I think the MX-39 has got kind of a higher skill uh, cap. Elian's going to be finding Thoris and Ram. He's kind of put in a little bit of a dangerous position. Thoris is going to try and connect the first shell. Gets pretty lucky with a low damage HP roll, but Devil's going to push on to Elian. Yeah, Devil is just getting straight over there, over the railroad. He is not waiting back for a second, but he's not landing the shells he needs to. Now Kedavan comes into play. He's down to 587, backing off. DJ Redeem gets in there, gets the damage done, gets back and resets the fight. But look at that central area. It's not stopping. Yukai crossing over the lines, looking towards Kedavan. Ankro did just the same, but they're not landing the shells they need once again. Finally, they get the action they want. Somehow, Yukai has not received a single bit of damage in the situation yet and can back away as his own accord decides. It's, it's really strange. He went so aggressive then, even though he knew the entirety of Mouse were there. He knew they were reloading. It's good situational awareness, but Snip and Ketaban now really are going to push on to Ankro. Ankro now has to back away 397, but look at that. The tier ones are battling out and falling. Mouse did take down, uh, I believe it was Magus there, but look at this. DJ Redeep fairly low. 643. Ankro continues the battle. Snip is in trouble. 105. He's trying to find cover. He needs to back away, but Yukai looks like he wants to get this one done. Kedavan following, so he's down to 144. And somehow, Odin Mortis have worked back this HP disadvantage, but Carmen is still sitting fairly pretty on 6-1-0. Who's he going to focus, especially with Yukai sitting completely full HP? What's great about Odin Mortis is they have that Pershing, so they don't really have to worry about not being able to do damage because of the reload. But Nia Pazorni is going to peek around. He's going to find Thoros. Indeed, and this with Zorni does make his way through. He does find Thoris, as you mentioned, not landing the shells ideally, but there we go. Finally gets it done. Yukai finds a reply, but it's only to a tier one. But look at this. Nis with Zorni is on fire. He's being melted right down, but he has taken down two. He takes down the Pershing. He takes down the T69. And that spells so much trouble for Mouse Sports really getting this one in the bag as quickly as possible because they still have Yukai to deal with. He is still sitting pretty. He can 1v3 this, but Devil's doing the work. He's in the 1390. He's taken down Carmen. He's looking for the follow up. 
Red Deep will get it on the Kelevan. Now just Snip stands in a massive 1v3 here. Peter can do nothing in that T1 but find the spots for him. And I've got to say it, Oda Mortis turned this, but look at the HP. It was back and forwards. It was back and forwards to say the least. Uh, Snip on 105 HP. He's also got about 10 seconds reload of that 25 you have on the uh, T178 gun on the T69. DJ Red Deep, 620, the most healthy in terms of the HP pool coming in to try and take care of him. I think he's got full reload. Yeah, indeed. He is now reloaded and ready to go. The fire already coming towards DJ Red Deep, but it's a quick dispatchment from Devil, who does take him down. Now just X Peter to locate, who's trying to make a bit of a last stand in Tier 1. But it's, uh, it's not going to quite happen. Yukai and Devil and DJ Red Deep, should I say, all getting into the battle. GG's are being said. But bearing in mind, Mousebot still got the all-important three maps first. And no matter how this one ends, Odin Mortis didn't do it in time. It will end truly in favor to Mousebot overall. But Odin Mortis keeping that map in there just for a bit of pride's sake. And, you know, working towards the end of the season, kind of uh, points gathering in the maps behind them. So well played by them. But I feel as though it was a little bit of a back and forth that could have been won either way in that. Yeah, it was. And maybe it's, in, it's into uh, Mouseports' hands in many respects. Mm. But I think that Pershing, it did 1.5k HP. It didn't have to worry about the reload at any point. It could just yep. go in and do the damage whenever it felt like it. And I think that gave them a very good edge. And I think teams are going to have to start looking towards picking the Pershing. I don't yep. think that extra T69 Mouseports took is such a good pick anymore. Uh, especially when it's back and forwards, when you want to be getting the cheeky bit of damage here and there. Uh, and that 250 bit of damage is a fantastic amount, especially when every tank is on about 500, 600 HP. Yeah. Um, so at the end of the day, okay, it maybe didn't count towards that much Oda Mortis's win. However, if it does come to the end of the season, as you mentioned, it does those maps start to get compared. Um, three to two to Mouseports will, could perhaps, it maybe could come will play. come to, yeah, exactly, could come in if the maps do get compared between um, Mouseports and Oda Mortis in the Mini League. Because bearing in mind, obviously, Mouseports were in ninth position, Oda Mortis were in fifth. So by the end of the season, they could be so very close. If they keep going back and forth, they keep picking up results, they're not going to break away from each other too far. Even though Oda Mortis were at the top of the league, it's very easy to slip back down to that kind mm. of central kind of position. So it all comes into effect. And I, I don't think we could have predicted that outcome. I know you kind of supported Mouseports in this, but I don't think you'd have expected it to be that close. You know what I mean? No. It, was, it was a close game, even in the matches. Yeah, I think it, it was unbelievably close. Uh, I thought, you know, after the first two matches, Mouseport's going to run away with it like yep. a 4-1 or a 5-0. But Oda Mortis just got their, their, their feet stuck in. And I think at the end of the day, that's what Oda Mortis seems to have troubles with. They're good towards the later games, but it's just the yeah. first one or two games, which they always seem to that have a slow, slow start. start yeah. Yeah, they have cold feet at the beginning. I'm not sure exactly what it is. They just need to, you know, jump out the gate at the beginning, you know, get some serious damage down, you know, play like they do at the end, play like they did on Prokhorovka, take the initiative, get the information. And if they do that, I don't see why they can't break that top three. Yeah, well, they've done it before. They can certainly do it again. But uh, the scoreline, it was very close. But it did end in favour to Mouse Sports. Now, I do wonder how many of you people at home got that one right. And I know there's a lovely lady waiting in the wings to kind of give you an idea of how you guys did. And obviously, let us know because I'm not sure. Because I was supporting Oda Mortis because on paper, they were the favourites to win this. So let's bring in Melly, who's just been waiting ever so politely and quietly in the corner. You know, not laughing loudly or throwing things around today. She's been very well behaved. So, Melly, how are the people out there doing? Did they they get it right? I'm scared today, Lauren. <laughs> I don't know what you're scared of. <laughs> it's okay. I've it's been okay. lovely. Yeah, of course, as always, as usual, my dear. <laughs> well, 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 let's go back to topic. Better do my work. <laughs> so uh, the vote started out with a slight favor for Odin Mortis. Okay, so people supported me initially. Yeah, but, like that. but that faded during <laughs> the <laughs> So and ended up like 53% for most sports. And um, people at home predicted um, much more a 5-0, 4-0, mm -hmm. like a pretty clear ending of this matchup. So not mm. very much people expected that uh, the match to be that close. So, um, yeah, that's mm -hmm. all so far. And Any questions? A single one. Single. One question. A single question. One is plenty. One is plenty, yeah. <laughs> Well, two, Oli. If you ask, you get two questions. The object 416, oh Soviet Lord. tier 8. Mm. Uh, why do you think people use it mainly on open maps? Well, you could see um, 
why Carmen was playing it on on steps against Odomois, and he was just sitting back in a bush and just trying to get the sniping damage on. That's exactly what it's good for. He's got good aim down time, good accuracy, and 320 damage. It, it packs a punch. So it's just a sniping tank. It's a very stable platform because the turret's on the back, so the center of gravity is towards there. So it, it's you got the weight front, so it doesn't tip too far forwards. Um, so I think generally it's just a good tank for that. You can also brawl well in firefights because its reload's not too bad. Um, but I'm not a massive fan of it. I honestly think a Pershing's a better pick. Okay, thank you. And let's jump at the end of the season. Which teams would you see in the relegation? <laughs> yeah, I know it's very <laughs> hard, hard to. Hard question. That's horrible. Since we're at play day eleven. I, I don't know. I I think it's it, you know we're only eleven days in. We still got another eleven days. We're only halfway through. Yeah. So I can't call it at this point. We've seen you know teams pick up nine match days in a row before, like Mal Sports last season. So that can happen to any team, yeah. and that will bring them easily in the top six. Well, let's look back to the season two finals. The people who kind of <laughs> qualify in last place got all the way through to second. They finished you know just after. Yeah, they had the top eleven teams. wins and eleven losses. Exactly, things can change, and it's it's really hard to predict you know who's going to really shine and who's not. So I'm with you on that one. I'm kind of backing out of that prediction because I'm wrong in one game, let alone deciding three teams who aren't going to do very well over. And any promising newcomers in the A series, which, which you will, would like to see in the hmm. Pro League? Well, I guess Wusa. I mean, we got a Subaru as well, but they were in season one. So mm. I guess the one we can call out is Wusa. They did try and qualify for this season, but they got beaten down by Odin Mortis in the relegation games. Um, but they definitely have the potential to come in. They've, you know, they're a bit of a giant there. They've beaten first pros and stuff, and, and Navi's. But they need to get the consistent results in, as mm. all these new teams seem to struggle with. They're obviously very skilled, and they can definitely beat the top teams, but not consistently. And when they play against the lesser teams, or the teams on the same level, they just lose anyway. So yep. it's about consistency in this game. Okay, thank you very much. That's all from me. So follow our Twitter uh, and Facebook pages. Follow everything. Follow our, our social media platforms. Stay in touch with us so I can keep you updated. And of course, um, follow our Twitch channel. That's very important to see when we're going live. So do that and don't miss a thing. Thank you. Well, there you have it, guys. We had a great, great match day today. We saw the likes of Kazna Crew taking down Team WD, who kind of haven't broken that bad record they've got so mm -hmm. far. They haven't really got a win yet. That's pretty harsh by match day 11. So Kazna Crew kind of rubbing salt into the wound there in the first game, but we saw an extremely close one between Mouseports and Odin Mortis. Mouseports in the end, just a little bit too strong there. Their execution was pretty much sublime, especially on the likes of Ensk. If you do want to see that progression as well, check out their game against Virtus Pro. It wasn't too long ago, and then watch them back on that one. If you do want to watch the VODs, obviously go to the WOTProLeague.com site and just look how much they've learned, because that really does just say so much to me about how they're improving, and they're certainly going to be a team to look out for in the future. But guys, hopefully you've had fun. I know we have here. It's been a great game day. It's been incredible watching these guys go head-to-head. -head -to -head. But if you have enjoyed it, as Melly said, follow all the social media channels and this Twitch page, and also tune back in on Thursday the 17th for the show and once again you obviously have myself here you'll have ollie and hopefully we can uh, get melly back here she normally runs away and tries to escape from us but we do try and tie her down and make sure she's back for you guys in twitch chat so guys hopefully see you then